Good morning and welcome to Food for Thought for Monday, March the 15th, 2021. My name is Pastor Clint Lang and I'm just glad that you can join me for this uh, morning's devotionals. We're continuing on with the parables of Jesus and um, today we're going to be speaking about the uh, parable of the speck in the log as told by Jesus in Matthew chapter 7 verses 1 to 5. And in this uh, particular parable, Jesus says this, Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For the same way that you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you used, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, Let me take out the speck from your eye, when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. So in this parable, we see Jesus speaking, um, I guess he's speaking to an attitude. Um, some of the audience that was listening to Jesus' teaching were the scribes and the Pharisees, and they were listening very critically, looking for a way that they might discredit or, uh, or call Jesus out on something that maybe they thought that they knew better on. So they considered themselves outwardly pure. And like the scribes and Pharisees in Jesus' day, some people think that the, make to, the way to make uh, yourself more righteous is to actually be more judgmental of others. And uh, Jesus' teaching here uh, rebukes that idea. This is why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 20, uh, that unless a person's righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, um, they will not enter the kingdom of God. So Jesus called for righteousness that was greater than that of the scribes and Pharisees who outwardly were sometimes perfect, outwardly. The righteousness that God calls people to, you see, is more, more than just outwardly conforming to the standards. Now, the reason is that uh, merely conforming to outward standards introduces the pride of man into the equation. Now, pride uh, loves to be elevated in the sight of men so that uh, you'll be esteemed highly by them. So when we're motivated by pride, we want other people to think well of us, and that's what motivates uh, pride, is looking good. And this is why Jesus told the disciples in another portion of Scripture to beware of the yeast of the Pharisees because it can spread like their ideas of what righteousness is can spread uh, like yeast throughout the whole uh, group of people. And um, Jesus was speaking about someone in this parable, uh, you know, that was considering themselves more righteous than they ought. And they were merely conforming to these outward standards. Um, he was speaking about conformity to God's law, but in the right heart. Um, you see, we can have right actions down, but our attitude can be less than desirable. Now, Jesus was speaking to this haughty, prideful spirit of those that think that judging their fellow man will make themselves more righteous. And, um, well, at this point, there comes, when you're reading this parable, there comes another big misunderstanding. Um, this verse has become very popular with some uh, who do not understand what Jesus is actually saying. Now, this verse has become a place for people to hide their sin. And they seem to think or hope that Jesus, what he was saying in this scripture, by saying not to judge, was that he was commanding a universal acceptance of any kind of lifestyle or teaching whatever a person wants to embrace. That we should never question that, we should never, uh, you know, be critical of that, even if that lifestyle is sinful. Well, a little later in the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew 7, 15, and 16, Jesus actually, uh, he commands his followers to know themselves and, and other people by the fruit that they display in their lifestyle. Well, the very thought of knowing yourself and knowing other people by the fruit means that you have to make a judgment. Um, 
there's some sort of assessment that goes on in that. But Jesus is not saying that we should just be totally accepting of every lifestyle that people want to live. That's not what he's saying in this parable. The Christian is to show in unconditional love to others, but is, uh, but is not called to show unconditional approval of lifestyles. When Jesus calls us not to judge others, he's not saying that we don't make any judgments for we have to make judgments. It's clear that we have to. What he is saying is that in our pride, if we merely consider externals, we, we ignore the humble heart of love that we are called to have for our neighbors. And actually in that, we look at ourselves um, as more, more highly esteemed than we should. Um, it's, it's pride. Uh, according to the Enduring Word, Word Bible Commentary, in proper context, we, we break the command not to judge others in this parable when we think the worst of others. We break this command when we speak only to other people's faults. We break the command when we judge an entire life only by, its worst, by a person's worst moments. We break this command when we judge the hidden motives of other people that we can't see. We break, break this command when we judge others without considering ourselves in their same circumstances. We break this command when we judge others without being mindful that we ourselves one day will be judged. Um, Jesus did not prohibit the judgment of others. What he is requiring, however, is that our judgment be completely fair and uh, that we only judge others by a standard that we also would want to be judged by and to ensure that our own attitudes, um, which can be planks or sticks or logs in our own eyes, are removed before we can see clearly enough to fix anyone else or talk to anyone else about their issues. Now Spurgeon once said this, he said, uh, Jesus is gentle, but he calls that man a hypocrite who fusses about small things in others and pays no attention to the great matters at home in his own person. So when our judgment in regards to others is wrong, it's often because not because we judge according to, to a standard, but because we're hypocritical in the application of that standard. We ignore the standard in our own life. It's uh, common to judge others by one standard and ourselves by another standard, being for, far more generous to ourselves than we are to others. And Jesus was driving at this, and this is why he said, you know, we shouldn't be quick to judge other people because we ourselves are going to be judged. And um, this is why he gave this parable to us. This is food for thought.